Welcome back to the channel, guys. Three moves that make you a millionaire. <laughs> Day in the life lifestyle. Oh, hell no. All this stuff that's on YouTube, all this fuzz that's on YouTube, all this fluff, you know? Everyone is trying to become a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, boy. Everyone wants to make seven figures, but no one wants to put in the work. This lady, I don't know what her name is, but she's some kind of Chinese person that said, all you have to do is make three moves to become a millionaire. So I want to know what these three moves are, don't you? No, God, please, no. Because I want to know. I want to see what are the secret sauces of success. So let's see what this girl has to say. And let's get into this video. I want to know what you guys are thinking. And if you guys like these reaction videos where I just break down other people explaining money and then pretty much terrorize them if they don't know it and actually accommodate and praise them if they do, you know, let me know if you like this kind of content. Okay. Because I will love making more content. I love judging people. Stop it. That's one of my favorite things to do. So if you guys like me judging people and you guys watch me judge people, you know, we're all winning at the end of the day. So one thing I do just want to ask you, bro, that like button looking pretty lonely down there, bro. It would be nice if your mouse button touched that like button so it would hug each other, okay? Please, let's spread some love to the like button. That would be nice. Anyways, guys, let's get into the video. All of a sudden, becoming a multiple seven-figure business owner, not just in sales but in profits, was able to do all of that in less than two years. That is insane. Vanessa Lau, let's go. What's up everyone? Welcome okay. back to my channel, the best place for new coaches, content creators, and entrepreneurs. In today's video, I want to talk about the three moves that I made that helped me make a million dollars and more in my life. I remember when what, I graduated- Do you guys really think she's a millionaire? Like, no, it's so hard to believe nowadays. Like, when I made my first million, bro, like, it was hard, bro. I never had a million dollars in my bank account, ever. I'll be totally honest with you. Like, I always had a company that was worth a million dollars. It's worth more than a million dollars. You know, we're netting 40, 50K a month, but the company itself is worth the million dollars. I don't have, I can't touch it unless I sell the company. So people like her, I'm like, Ooh. I'm not gonna judge too hard. Let's see what she has to say. Let's see what she has to say. At university, I started working at a corporation making $65,000 a year. Shortly okay. after that, I decided to quit cold turkey, which honestly isn't the smartest move that I could have made, but it was what I needed in order to really create space in my life to start a business eventually or do something different that would make me happier. Well, long story short, within a few months of quitting my corporate job, I realized that I actually needed to get a job even if I wanted to start a business. But going back to corporate just wasn't an option and I knew that it was going to be a band-aid solution And so what I did is I reset everything decided to work at a coffee shop making $12 an hour minimum wage for at least half a year during that time period I decided to start a business start this YouTube channel create content online and fast forward today I went from minimum wage to now having a multiple seven-figure business and also when a multiple someone says multiple seven-figure They don't really know what seven figures mean means seven figures for anyone out there that doesn't know what it means it's a million dollars but when you say multiple seven figures you're just trying to show off that you made more than a million dollars which is just seven figures because there's seven figures in the number itself you know you're trying to provide more credit than you really need to have because seven figures is everything besides eight figures okay so that means one million that means five million that means seven million okay you don't have to say multiple seven figure okay because that just discredits yourself it, it makes you look like you know nothing but let's keep going i don't want to judge i'm not judging i'm just telling you this is what i see from the outside looking in multiple seven figure net worth and so in today's video i really want to share the three key things that I did in my life to get to this point because I know back then even when I was in corporate making 65k a year I thought that it would be impossible for me to make a million dollars and I had no idea how other people were doing that and so I hope that this video can really expand your mind to what's possible in your life all the little changes and shifts that you can make in order to hit six figures seven figures in your life or even in your business and so if you're interested in all that then keep watching all right so let's talk about the first move that I made that helped me become a millionaire, not just in revenue or sales, but in profits. And that is productizing my knowledge and my brand. And to be honest, I had no idea that I was even doing this until I read this book. Oh, 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 this is a good book. Okay. I haven't read it yet. I want to, it's on my to-do list, but this guy, holy freak. If you don't know who Naval is guys, he is the number one guy in Silicon Valley. Like he's like the godfather. Like if Naval comes and emails your business or if you pique Naval's interest on Twitter or anything like that, bro, you have made it as an entrepreneur. Like he's like 
the godfather of entrepreneurship. So like if you start a business and Naval hits you up, you pretty much won the game. You beat the game of freaking business. Okay, that's it. But he made this book called The Almanac and I haven't read it. I don't know what it's about, but I know for a fact there's such good information in that book that I can only imagine the type of skills you will learn in that book from Naval himself. You know, if you guys listen to him, I definitely recommend you checking out Naval's stuff on Joe Rogan. He got on Joe Rogan podcast. He has a really cool Twitter sub thread, like a tweet storm on the fundamentals of how to get rich. And it's not like these freaking scam gurus buy a Lamborghini and sell a course. No, it's like actually how to get rich. So he's on Spotify too, bro. Go listen to Naval, bro. He's on the Tim Ferriss podcast as well, bro. Go listen to Naval. Quick this video, go listen to Naval, bro. He's such an amazing entrepreneur. Of Naval Ravikant. And if you're like me months ago who had no idea who Naval was, he's actually the co-founder of Angelist. And he's also a venture capitalist within the Silicon Valley space. And he's just a huge player is within tech. In this book, something interesting that he mentions is how different generations build wealth. And the previous generation, they were able to build wealth. And by wealth, I mean become billionaires with capital. And capital essentially means cash. You would need to be a Henry Ford or a Warren Buffett, someone who has a lot of cash that they can use as leverage to continue growing their businesses or themselves or their lives or whatever else. Versus the newer generation, a lot of the wealth that they're building is due to the fact that they have either code leverage or media leverage. Now, mm. what does that mean? Code leverage is basically code, literally writing code. And if you think about Jeff Bezos, you think about Mark Zuckerberg, you think about Steve Jobs, a lot of them had leverage because they had incredible code. They had incredible technology that they were able to leverage in order to build up their businesses and build themselves into billionaire status. Versus media. Media could be the PewDiePie's or the Joe Rogan's of the world, or even me. You can post content on a podcast, on YouTube, and yeah, also build a lot of money from that. Joe Rogan, every time that he releases an episode, or just the fact that he even has a podcast, he makes anywhere between 50 to 100 million dollars a year. And that's because because he has media leverage. And so in this case, what I've learned through reading this book is that there are so many different ways to accumulate wealth and capital, whether that's cash or labor, is not the only way. And nowadays there are different ways that you can build wealth. And one of the most incredible things that I got from reading this book is that code and media, the newer leverages in order to build wealth are basically permissionless. And what he means by permissionless is you don't need anyone's permission to write code or to create media in order to succeed. Versus if you are leveraging cash or if you are leveraging labor, you need someone to give you that cash or you need someone to follow you in order to give you labor. And it requires a level of permission. Whereas nowadays, as long as you have a computer and you have Wi-Fi, you're able to create content online, basically build your own media company or even open up your computer and write code. And if you're- Okay, I totally agree with this. Basically, she's just reiterating what Naval says. So I can't rip her. I would totally love to rip her but i can't go against naval bro okay listen guys what she's basically trying to explain that we are in a new society we're in a new generation of people that there's no gatekeepers anymore we can go out there and start a business we could build a website without having to do anything without having to have the permission of someone else all you have to do is pay 30 dollars for your website domain and hosting and then now you have a website that you can sell services on. So that's what she's trying to explain that there's no gatekeepers anymore. Before that, you know, you would have to pretty much develop the internet first. And then after developing the internet, find out how to build a website, find out how to sell things online, find out how to acquire customers online. It's a big process, but nowadays it's very seamless. There's a lot of softwares and stuff like that that are available nowadays. But the other thing that she was talking about is using leverage, cash, for example. Cash is an amazing tool and a lot of people don't realize this, but the more cash you have, the more cash you can earn. That's why Warren Buffett at the age of like 90 can make more money in one year than he made in like 50 of his years is because when you have cash, you can use that cash to double and compound on what you already have. Real estate is a perfect example of this. So Naval, amazing book. And I would love to read that. I want to get my hands dirty with that book. But yes, I totally agree with what she's saying. We're in a new generation where things are not as hard as they used to be. Top of productizing my knowledge, my brand and myself here on social media. The next move that I made was I grew my audience organically. And what that means is I didn't rely on paid advertising when I first started in order to build my audience. Nowadays, I do include paid advertising in my marketing and sales strategy. And I think there is definitely a place for paid ads and it can certainly give you a leg up if you have the money to invest. Because if anything with paid ads, especially if you're doing it right, you should never 
really be losing money. If anything, if you lose money, you're probably doing something wrong, whether your creatives are off or your targeting isn't right and all of that. Because at the end of the day, if you're able to put in $10 into Facebook Ad Manager or $10 into Google AdSense and you're able to get $20, $30 back, that is a really good ROI and is definitely worth your money. However, one thing that I'm really glad that I did is I built a very strong organic audience. Meaning this that- This is the thing about these females that they don't realize this, that look, okay, I don't know what business she's in. And frankly, I kind of think it's in the e-commerce side of things because she keeps saying revenue versus profit. But if you're trying to build an organic audience on, you know, these major platforms, like, you know, there's not a lot of people that could go out there and make, you know, a bunch of different content and, you know, attract a fan base without bringing in some attention. Facebook, Instagram, all these major platforms have so much posting and content that's being posted on such a daily basis that content is not being reached to the correct amount of people. So I have different softwares in place that actually allow me to target the people that I want to target. But for example, you know, organic is going to take way longer. You know, I promise you, she did not become a millionaire in two years, three years or whatever. I promise you should not become a millionaire in those couple of years from organic audience, you know, targeting. Okay. Maybe her YouTube channel did really good and she threw some affiliate links in there and they popped off. But if you're talking about organic traffic in terms of your brand, in terms of a company, I get it. An influencer is different. A company is completely different. Good luck because you're going to get crushed. You're not going to see no royalties, no revenues, no nothing. And for a very long time until someone comes in, does an influencer campaign, or maybe you're just some creative genius like Gary Vaynerchuk, where you could just bring in a crazy amount of organic traffic. And so that happens, you're not seeing that kind of success, buddy, especially organically. You would have to go through paid advertising at least, you know, a little bit to get the ball rolling at least, you know, that people found me organically through their own will, through their own search. And yeah. People found you. They found your YouTube channel, which is not your company. Your company is something else that you will not be able to have a lot of people coming to if you weren't running Facebook ads or traffic ads that are bringing people to your company because your company reach is way limited. There's no personal brand behind it. There's no face. There's no identity. So it's way more tough. You know, you see Jake Paul hit a million likes on his Instagram post, but if you go to Coca-Cola, they're only getting 20, 30,000 likes on their post, even though they have, you know, probably the same amount of followers. So you get the idea. That is scaling up my time. All right, now let's talk about the third move that I made that really helped me see my first million or my first multi-million or even my first six figures. And that is scaling up my time. Okay. And so when I first started on my journey, I productized my knowledge and my brand by first offering one-on-one -on -one services. And so oh when I was creating videos God, like this about bro. quitting the nine to five and Stop all these different things, it. I had a few people reach out to me asking for private consultation on how they could leave their nine to fives and all of that. And eventually I started charging. And so I had one-on-one -on -one clients that I was working with privately. Eventually I was booked out and I realized that I needed to do something about it because the fact that I was trading time for money, if I was booked out with clients, I wasn't able to make more money. I wasn't able to sign any more clients. There was a cap on number one, the amount of value that I could give, but also the amount of money that I could make. And so eventually I transitioned it into somewhat of a group coaching course hybrid. What this means is I took all of my knowledge and then I launched the first variation of the Boss Graham Academy. So since then I have pivoted. I now teach people how to use social media to turn their followers into clients just like I did through selling their one-on-one -on -one services. And so basically- Yeah, so I she, saw, she started a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Pretty much is what she's saying. So she said she started her own course and she's teaching other people how to start their own courses. And those people that bought her own course are now starting courses on how to get more people to buy more courses. You see why this is a pyramid scheme. This is why I hate online people like her. Like they go out of their way to teach people how to sell things, but which are courses. I bet you for a hundred percent, I guarantee you now that this girl makes maybe 90% of her money on courses and strategies because she did not mention any online e-commerce store, any marketing agency, any SaaS company. She mentioned is the Boss Graham Academy where you can learn how to turn your followers into clients and you can sell courses to them. Yeah, yeah, that's totally everyone should be doing is, you know, selling courses to random people, right? 
No, this is not what you should be doing as an entrepreneur. Naval didn't teach you how to sell a course, buddy. I promise you that, Vanessa, okay? So please, for the love of God, do not follow her advice. Okay, I get the idea. I like the idea of how to trading your time for money, and that's very bad. You shouldn't be doing that. But what you should be doing instead of that is providing more value. Instead of maybe providing a course academy, maybe you could start building a software that allows you to you know, integrate social media with different type of clientele. So let's just say you want to start a tea business on Instagram. You have a software that basically explains if a person wants to start a tea business, what are the correct accommodations for a tea business? How to start an Instagram account for the tea business? How to acquire clients for the tea business? What type of a demographic they have for the tea business? That's an example of what you should be doing as an entrepreneur. Now you built that customer, you know, you built that following for your software. Now Naval comes, buys your software for $50 million. So now you just got acquired by a major venture capitalist like Naval or whoever, and you just made it. That's that's the goal of a company. The goal of the company is to expand expand it. It's not to be Boss Graham Academy where you teach other people how to become rich or how to sell a course. That's not what people are looking for nowadays. And it's just ridiculous. You know, I don't like this kind of stuff and I never will. I want to do some research on her. Let's do some research together. How about that? Let's go to her bio and check out what she's doing and what kind of stuff is she selling. Let's do a little like, you know, test. How much do you guys think she's selling her course for? Okay. I think she's selling it for about $200. $200 for the Boss Graham Academy. I want to register right now. Oh man, they don't even let you see how much the course cost. If I put in my information, will I get access to a seat? Snag your free seat now. So look, they send you to a page where you can get started. But honestly, I want to know how much the price is. Let's do some more research and figure out how much this price is. Look, they don't even give you the price. That's so funny because you know what she's doing? She has her own webinar where she's getting people to freaking come to her webinar and sell you on the webinar. So you get the link to whatever she's trying to sell on the webinar. Holy frick, man. This is so bad. Okay. I want to find out how to join Vanessa's, you know, academy though. I want to find out like if there's a place that I could just go to pay for something like that. I locked in my first client for $2,000. Oh, wow. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's nowhere that she sells it. Okay, wait one second. Here, here. Ooh, click here to apply. She doesn't let you buy the course. Okay. I mean, so she wants you to get on the registration. She wants to get you on the call. Do you guys want me to do a follow-up video where I critique the call? Because I'm a social media god, bro. I get this stuff. I understand this stuff. So if this video, you know, if you want to see me go into her freaking webinar and pretty much rip it and show you guys the actual truth and tell you how much she's charging for this, let me know. I'm totally down for it. But maybe the information's good. We don't know. You know, is Boss Academy something that I want to get started with? Maybe I want to change my life and start making some passive income and quit my coffee job. But anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I think this is enough here. Thank you guys so much for watching and it's ish. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like for part two, let's go.